a Ford 8.828 spline. Uh, this is an open carrier. That's the little bolt that you need to pull out just to be able to pull out the pin that's in the middle here. Um, and that's the only way that you could remove your axle shaft on either side. So, I already loosened him up. Make sure you use a 6.516 socket. Um, kind of a tight little area to try to get into, but make sure it's a 6 point. You don't want to round off that bolt and have it stuck in there. Um, so, you take him out, and I'm going to be replacing him, so I'm not reusing the bolt that's there. I'm putting in a brand new one, just because I want something as strong as possible, because for some people, they break. Right now this is going to be removing the passenger side. I've already removed the driver's side over there. So what I'm doing here is I have my Baron, brand new one, and I'm going to load it with some gear oil first, just a little bit all inside of it to make sure that it's not going to be ran dry or anything like that. I set the Baron inside of the axle shaft. I just used the old Baron to actually tap it. Now, when I'm working with bearings and everything else that uh, has very tight tolerances, I usually try to be as clean as possible. Maybe a little bit. 
bit of oil on my finger. Just spread it on to the bearings in here. It'll seep in a little bit. A bit more. It doesn't need to be fully loaded or anything to use all of your axle fluid is going to end up, end up leaking into this anyways once you fill up your differential but still still always nice to have a little precaution just in case it's going to be moved around by hand or anything like that while well, it's dry it's not good for it so this keeps a little bit of oil in it at all times Go. Rip some of this excess oil all over the bearing itself. There we go. Now, when you go to set the bearing in, where you see the actual writing on the bearing face itself, you're going to take that and point it outwards so you can still read the, the writing. I don't really know why this is, but I've always read on a lot of bearings that that's how they're supposed to be set, so that's how I'm going to set it for this one. Uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of fluid just in around where the bearing rubs. Well, it doesn't rub where it slides into. It'll help to get it in there a little bit better. Now, remember, this is all just gear oil that I'm rubbing everywhere. So it's nothing different for the for what the bearing's going to actually run in. Set it in. There's two lips that you need to clear. Uh, the first one is actually for the barren seal. It's actually a little bit larger, so you're going to be able to slide the barren right through that area. Then once you end up hitting where the barren sits inside of your axle, it's going to be tight, and that's actually where the barren needs to be pushed in there. Alright, this one just by luck slid in easily, actually I'm a little scared because it slid in really easily, but uh, that's okay, I can deal with it anyways. Now to make sure that it's back all the way, I'm going to take my old Baron, or I took it from the other side, that's my old one, I'm going to take that and actually push it against it and give it some tapping with the hammer. Now. Barons usually don't go in quite as easy as that for most of it. You would have needed to start tapping quite a bit sooner than this. Um, but this one ended up having some damage inside where the axle was before. And someone has ground it down a little bit and might end up hurting it with that. Just gentle tapping all around the edges and try to keep it even. Always try to keep it even. So, all around it. And the way that I find out if I have it all the way in is uh, if it doesn't move anymore. That's it. That's pushed in all the way as far as it can be. Our light is going limp on us here. All right. Clean off your fingers well if you're going to go around the new bearing now. Feels pretty good. Now, <clears throat> when I actually uh, put in the seal here, I'm going to be 
put an extra sealant on with it just to give it that extra little bit of seal because the way that these seals go in they fully rely on the uh, on the seal and the axle to be as smooth as possible or else it won't seal properly against the oil so because of that since this is an older truck and bearings have been removed a couple times probably I'm gonna put a little bit of extra seal around it so to do that I'm gonna clean all around this this edge with some brake cleaner um, just spray some on the paper towel itself that way you don't spray it into the barren um, clean it up let it dry up some and then I'm gonna put on some black RTV seal stuff that I use is ultra black it works pretty well Be careful with Timken Barons, because unfortunately for the 93 and 97 Ford Rangers, uh, they don't understand which rear end is which. They call the 8.8, um, well, sorry, the one that they say is 8.8 .8 is actually an 8.831 spline Baron, and unfortunately these are 28 spline Barons inside of the Rangers, so I had the wrong Barons because of that. What they, on Timken, what they actually call a 7.5 is what fits these 8.8s because it also fits the 7.5. I didn't know that at first. Uh, anyways, also the seal that comes in is incorrect from Timken also. Um, this is from Napa. I needed to buy all my replacements from there because it wouldn't take them too long to get from Timken. Anyways, the proper number is 13992, and that's whether you buy Timken or SKF or whichever, they're the same number. That's what fits the 4.0 Ford Ranger with an 8.8. The Timken one was a different number again. You need to make sure you get the 7.5 inch axle. Uh, sorry, 7.5 inch ring gear. Um, or else it won't fit this guy. So, here we go. Let's get the seal out. That's our little seal here. Get some light on it. There you go. It's got a little spring in there. Uh, the way that these guys mount, the spring is inside and you just have the flat face that's going to stick out. He pushes in all the way until he's actually right up to, not the outside lip, but this inner lip piece here. That's how deep these guys are supposed to be driven in. Now for me, I'm going to be putting some sealant around the outside edge of this guy, uh, and a little bit in around this edge too. Not very deep in, but just around it so as you drive this guy in, he keeps his seal all the way in, inside. Now get a little bit of our ultra black here. Just put a little bit on the end of your finger. That will work out perfect for it. And I'm just going to spread it on there. Doesn't need to be very thick. And that'll help that seal a little bit better. And then I take whatever excess is on my finger and just spread it onto the actual seal itself. Just on the outer edge, remember. There we go. Now this guy's going to need to be driven in also. To drive him in, I also use the old Baron. 
just let the ultra black stick that on for a little bit while I clean up my fingers. You don't want to get ultra black all over the actual rubber sealing surface. Might not do it very well. So once again I take my trusty Baron that I used earlier, which is one of the old ones that I pulled out of this. This is a great way to do it if you don't have a seal, seal driver or a Baron driver. Um, I've used this quite a few times and it works fine. Now, once again, just gentle taps and you need to try to keep it as even as possible. and use patience because you don't want to just hammer on it as hard as you can because if you do it might end up warping the actual seal and then it won't be sealed very well even though we do have that sealing ultra black stuff there it's still nice to have it driven in properly make it so it's flush to that inner lip, not this outer edge here. So the inner lip is just kind of just as the bevel ends and it ends up being inside of the axle area. That's how you drive in a Baron and Seal, just using your old Baron that was there. Um, now if you check online for how to use a slide hammer, um, I'm sure you'll be able to find something. It does take some force to get the old ones out. You're better off actually prying up the seals. I'm just making sure that the sealing compound here is all around the Baron, or the seal here. But uh, when you end up actually taking out the old seal and old baron. You're probably going to be better off to gently hammer on the outer edge of the old baron, or the old seal I mean, because the old seal has a little lip, if it's the original one that was on the truck at least, and some of the ones that come from, from the dealer. Uh, it'll have a little metal lip that's all around the outside edge of this. You don't want to hammer on this, you want to hammer on the actual edge on the, the lip of the seal itself. If you hammer it inwards with a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, you can actually make it break the little rust that it's going to have all around it. And then you can actually take the slide hammer, hook in behind the baron and the seal, and pull them both out together. Just be careful that you don't put too much force onto it, because you can actually shatter the baron race itself, and uh, it makes it more difficult to try to take everything out. That's what happened on this side, so I know for certain that you could shatter it. It actually broke this edge right out on the old Baron that was on this side. So, don't give it too much force or else you could blow the Baron apart. That's it though. Now you just clean up any of the extra sealant that you have sticking all over the place where it's not supposed to be. And uh, put a little bit more gear oil in around your seal area. That way when you put the shaft in, it's nice and lubricated already around the seal. And that's it. Fill up your differential and stuff with fluid.